Hello everyone, what's up? Tony Talb here um, to review tonight's edition of Monday Night Raw. Um, it was a, a, di a very decent Raw. Uh, it slowed down quite a bit, if not a lot, from last week. But it was a pretty decent show nonetheless. So let's get let's run down the show. Um, first of all, Daniel Bryan coming out to the ring. A short promo about his how he's not the weak wing and how he was gonna finish uh, this thing with Randy Orton tonight. Orton coming out, interrupting him, and telling him to shut up and fight. A brawl ensued. They went to the outside. They kept brawling until the referee called off the match. A double disqualification. Brian, furious about it, went to the back to Vicky Guerrero's office and demanded a match against Randy Orton tonight, demanded that the match be restarted. And Vicky said yes, later tonight, Daniel Bryan versus Randy Orton. Um, after that, uh, attacking match, well, Team World Scholars against Sheamus and Christian, uh, a match in which Christian wrestled almost all the match. Uh, da uh, Damien Sandow and Cody Rhodes double teaming Christian throughout the match uh, until there was a double tag. Sandow coming in, Sheamus coming in, Sheamus cleaning house, he's dominant as he's ever been. Uh, and the ending was really weird actually. Um, Sandow back into his corner, Cody tagging himself in, and when he was coming in, he stumbled uh, with Sandow. And I don't know what, what the hell happened there, but when he turned away, when Cody turned away, turned around, uh, Sheamus knocked him out with a bro kick. One, two, three, the match was over. I don't know if that was the intended ending. It was pretty weird, but probably it was, but pretty weird ending nonetheless. And after that, uh, Big Key uh, in the back uh, approaching CM Punk. CM Punk not paying attention to her. Biggie got mad about it. Punk got even madder and told her to tell him when Paul Heyman and or Brock Lesnar arrived to the arena. He didn't want, want to know about anything else. Really pissed off CM Punk. And after, after that, uh, Caitlyn uh, defeated Aksana in a pretty short match that was interrupted by AJ. In the stage, dressed as Caitlyn, and with Biggie Langston by her side, mocking all the secret admirer situation and that stuff, with some pretty good uh, jabs at Caitlyn, like the uh, like saying that Caitlyn's voice was as deep as Langston's. Uh, the usual mind games of AJ with Caitlyn. And uh, Layla trying to contain Caitlyn to not uh, fight against AJ. You know, pretty short segment uh, there. Um, after that, good match uh, between Jericho and Alberto Del Rio. Mm, Del Rio actually dominating Chris Jericho for the majority of the match. I thought it would have been a more uh, even match. But Jericho hanged on to it. And he was about to win with the walls of Jericho. Uh, after a couple of reversals, uh, he locked the walls. He was going to win. Apparently, Alberto was going to tap. But Ricardo Rodriguez entered the ring, hit Jericho. Disqualification victory for Jericho. And out came Ziggler again, attacking Del Rio and Ricardo Rodriguez, saving Jericho. And after that, a standoff, a face to face confrontation between Jericho and Ziggler. Remember what happened last year? It was Ziggler that made Jericho disappear from the WWE and apparently nothing was going to happen Jericho turned turned around was going to leave and Ziggler with a six sack from behind attacking Jericho great tension between them it, it's set in stone Ziggler versus the Rio at Money in the Bank I would have thought I would have liked to have Jericho involved in a triple threat match but Ziggler and the Rio is too personal to have that uh, but anyways, after that, we had Vicky, Guerrero, and Maddox at the back with Triple H coming in. Uh, earlier in the night, I forgot to say, uh, uh, after Daniel Bryan uh, demanded his match, 
Vince McMahon kind of implied that Daniel Bryan was kind of a failure, even though some people th thought that think that he deserves his spot. So Triple H came inside and again, in contrast to Vince McMahon, said Daniel Bryan is popular, people love him, and that that match with Randy Orton was going to take place later tonight and that the people were going to decide the stipulation. Vicky came out with Maddox and Jerry Lawler in the ring to reveal the new WWE 2K14 game uh, cover for the game. Uh, but before that, Vicky announced that the stipulations that fans could vote for were Street Fight, Lumberjack, and False Count Anywhere. Uh, after that, a uh, little ass kissing by Vicky and Maddox with their own uh, cover cover uh, arts for the game. Uh, Vicky made with Vince, Stephanie, and Triple H, and Maddox with Cena, Punk, and himself in the cover, but the king interrupted them and said the real cover was The Rock uh, as the only man in the cover of the WWE 2K14 game. There was a trailer shown during the show, but that's for another video. <clears throat> then we had uh, Ryback facing the great Kali. Ryback, which was, in my opinion, just a match to, to show that he's still dominant, that he can beat anybody, I guess, except for the main event players. Um, he defeated Kali after receiving a lot of punishment. Pretty short match with a shell shock, an impressive shell shock to the great Kali. It was more than 400 pounds. I mean, come on. This guy may not be too good inside the ring, but he sure is scary strong. Um, after that, uh, Cena came out to do a promo. And now uh, it was it wasn't a very good promo up until he started to get intense. He started saying he started by saying that many people have wanted tens of thousands of people have wanted to be the WWE champion. Only 41 super, uh, men have done it. And he said that it was one of the most important things in the world. The usual stuff, but the promo actually picked up when he started to be intense about it. He said that the Mark Henry had lied to the WWE Universe and all this stuff, but then it seemed that Ken do great promos when he has that intensity. He's told Mark Henry to that he he said that Mark Henry didn't have the uh, check the calendar because he was kick ass season and he was going to kick uh, to knock Mark Henry's teeth down his throat. It was a the, the promo started very bad in my opinion, very boring but ended great. That's what Cena needs to do. Be more business, less jokes, more intense. That's what's entertaining about Cena, at least in my opinion. Um, that was it. I would have loved the confrontation between those two, but that didn't happen. Then uh, a triple threat tag team match. The use of the use of, uh, Tons of Funk and 3MB, Heath Slayer and Jinder Mahal. The winners number one to get a uh, number one contender spot for the tag team titles had money in the bank. Quick match. The I actually liked the Usos today. They look great. I love the entrance, by the way. Uh, the first time I've seen their entrance uh, like that. Uh, very very good tag team match. Pretty quick. But hey, I'm rooting, I'm pulling for the Usos here. I'm rooting for them uh, after the match. Uh, the shield came to the um, between the audience. They raised their titles. They signaled they were going to keep them. They used a signal that they were going to get them. Uh, it's going to be a pretty interesting match, in my opinion, at Money in the Bank. I want to see it. Uh, but then it was the promo of the night. Paul Heyman and CM Punk, what everyone was waiting for. The confrontation. Paul Heyman Punk, uh, demanding the truth. Heyman saying that he didn't send Brock Lesnar, that he loved CM Punk, and he was one day going to uh, accompany him down the aisle again at the main event of WrestleMania. Punk said he believed him and apologized for doubting him. But then Punk had a match against Darren Young. A good match, you know, actually a good match between Darren Young and CM Punk. Longer than I thought it would be. 
uh, almost got the win. Uh, Darren Young almost got the win, but Punk made him tag very quickly, I might add, uh, with the Anaconda Vice. Uh, Titus O'Neil coming inside. Punk looked like he had injured his knee. They were two on one, and out came Curtis Axel to help CM Punk. Now that surprised me. That was the only surprise of the night for me. And uh, okay, Punk, uh, Punk didn't seem happy about it. They went to the back, and Punk told Heyman not to do it again. And Paul said he had talked with Vicky Guerrero, and that next week on Raw is going to be Curtis Axel and Punk against. Uh, primetime players, Punk said, told him again, I don't need Curtis Axel, and you can tell Brock Lesnar that I'm going to kick his ass. One thing I love Punk said during his promo was, he may not be as strong as Lesnar, he may not be as big as Lesnar, but Brock Lesnar is not better than him. That was a great line in my opinion. Uh, after that, uh, Vicky confronted by Stephanie saying that she should have uh, told the audience about the Money in the Bank participants. Stephanie went outside and made the match. WWE Championship Money in the Bank ladder match. It's going to be Sheamus, Orton, Brian, Christian, Kane, Punk, and RBD. That, for me, is a great Money in the Bank match. I guess uh, seven participants is, is, a, is a weird number, but I think it's going to be great. Um, after that... Um, Mark Henry come, came out to do a promo, told the people that he had played with them. They were the, his puppets. And he played with them and all that stuff. He said he was coming home. He was indeed coming home, but with the WWE Championship. Again, I would have loved a confrontation uh, between uh, Cena and Henry, but hey, we still have like three weeks. So there's enough time for building that match. I like the way this is going. This is going between Henry and Cena. Uh, and, there, the, and then the main event. Street fight between Brian and Orton. It was, in my opinion, the best match of the night. Pretty good match. Pretty good match. I love the match. It wasn't a five-star match, but it was a pretty good match for Raw. Especially in this, uh, in this time. Uh, the ending came when uh, pretty pretty brutal for t today's standards uh, for a street fight. Um, in my opinion, with that uh, those kendo sticks flying around, those hits, um, and Brian making Randy Orton tap out with the no lock, great finish. Uh, Orton got the kendo stick, started hitting Brian. Brian got the kendo stick and started and applied pressure with the kendo stick. In the no lock, and Randy had no other option but to tap out. Great finish, great match, good spot with the table with a power bomb on the table on the outside uh, from Brian to Orton, and Orton with a suplex to the table on the inside in the corner that just the edge broke. It might have been even more painful than going through the middle of the table actually because the edges are stronger. But good match, nonetheless. Uh, I like the match. It's my favorite match of the night. Like I said, pretty decent raw. Not as good. Miles away from last week. And that may have had something to do with the audience. The, the audience was not uh, very good tonight. They were dead almost all night. Uh, one thing I liked, though, was the watch chance. I, I love the watch chance uh, in Mark Henry promo. So yeah, that's my take on Raw this uh, on Raw tonight and this week. Uh, so please tell me in the comment section what you if you like the show or if you were disappointed. Uh, great money in the bank pay per view that's coming up. Jericho, yeah, Jericho versus Ryback. Add money in the bank was made after Ryback uh, asked Biggie to give him another chance at the WWE title. Jericho came in and said he wanted a match. It was made after a confrontation between the two at the back. It's shaping up to be a pretty good money in the bank. This and Raw, let's hope to next week it's better. So please, uh, guys, tell me what you think. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, and help me out. Thanks for watching. Bye.